St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from the Lund family. This Mass is offered in memory of their parents, Walter and Lee Lund, and I'm happy to welcome many of the family members who are present here for this Mass today. By choosing to remember your parents, Walter and Lee, in this way, you are joined by thousands of people across Canada. On their behalf, I thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves now to celebrate the Eucharist, to indeed be enriched by the gift of God's word and his sacrament, we pause and place ourselves in God's presence, conscious once again of our need of his grace and his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us your spirit and call us to holiness, Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, on the last day, you will present us to the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord, and may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, comfort of those in sorrow, the tears of Saint Monica moved you to convert her son, Saint Augustine, to the faith of the Church. By their prayers, help us to turn from our sin and to find your loving forgiveness. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Now concerning love of the brothers and sisters, you do not need to have to have anyone write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do love all brothers and sisters throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, beloved, to do so more and more, to aspire to live quietly, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands as we directed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told this parable to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's treasure. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, reaping where, ma Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here is what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interests. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you know, in, in what appears to be a, a repetitious message of Pope Benedict, is his frequent reminder of the modern-day danger of secularism and the pursuit of materialism within our society today. Its general goal, that is, secularism and materialism, is to squeeze out of the place, to squeeze the place out of society, the presence of God. If there's a modern-day heresy, Pope Benedict says it would have to be that of secularism and its roots in materialism. On his recent visit to Britain, Benedict had this to say about the increasing influence of these isms. He says, I cannot but voice my concern at the increasing marginalization of religion, particularly of Christianity, that is taking place in some quarters, even in nations that place a great emphasis on tolerance. I believe we can expect to hear much more from Benedict on this topic. And I pick up this theme today only because it, it, it is possible for some to read today's gospel with the conclusion that increasing what material gains we have may be, it seems, the first pursuit of being a loyal Christian. The stewards who have increased their talents are being rewarded. The parable, however, is not about money or materials. The parable of the talents is about the kingdom of heaven. We gain a deeper sense of the meaning of the parable if we understand that the talents given to each of us are like gifts bestowed upon us. Such gifts are not equally distributed. 
Jesus knew, and Paul, that there were a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And dwelling on this theme, Paul further acknowledges that there are all sorts of services to be done, but always to the same Lord, working in all of them. He further reminds us in chapter 12 of his letter to the Corinthians that the particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. Specifically, Paul mentions the gifts of preaching, of healing, of prophecy, and I would also include those who might have gifts or talents for drawing great plans for cathedrals, or, or those who have the ability to design and, and play musical instruments. Some know how to bake or sing, or are able to simply listen to another person's story. Not all gifts are equal, but all come from the same source, and that is why we look upon them as holy. To be sure, the greater gift and the number of gifts possessed by any one individual assumes a greater responsibility and a greater accountability. This parable of the talents attempts to remind each one of us that we do possess gifts or talents, and these come from God. It's therefore incumbent upon each of us as Christians to know and identify our gifts and to put them at the service of one another and the church. What is it that we do with our time, talent, substance, and opportunity? How are we seeking to improve the quantity and the quality of what we do and say as we seek to fulfill our own personal call to holiness? The texts tell us two, the, the, two of the three servants did just that, and as a result were generously rewarded. The one who goes on a journey in today's gospel reading and the one who returns, of course, symbolizes Jesus, who, as we know and believe, has gone to the Father and will again return to judge the living and the dead. For the one who abandons use of their talents, it would seem that the final judgment will be harsh. Certainly, one sure way to avoid harsh judgment is to take seriously the text of our first reading from Thessalonians, where Paul reminds these early Christian believers to persevere and to increase more and more in their efforts to build up one another in brotherly love. For where charity and love are found, there is God. Building up bonds of charity and fraternal love is the one gift in which we all participate. In however we exercise the use of our time, talent, substance, and opportunity, it must be born out of this spirit of charity in love, which makes our thoughts and actions approvingly acceptable to God, the giver of all good gifts. For where our hearts are, so also is our treasure. And perhaps one final response we should make to today's reading is to give fitting praise and thanks to God for the gifts that are ours. We do well always and everywhere also if we acknowledge and give similar thanks for the gifts of others and pray especially for those who might have abandoned or simply buried their gifts, perhaps due to materialism or secularism. For the, for the latter, for the, for the latter, our prayer is that they would discover anew and exercise the use of their gifts for their own personal benefit and for the benefit of those who are receiving that end. And it's, it's dutiful to say today that Monica, St. Monica, would have been a, a giant in terms of identifying her own gifts, especially the perseverance that she gave to prayer as she sought to convert her son Augustine. Indeed, for the generosity of the outpouring of God's gifts upon his people and for the fullest use of these gifts today and in the days to come, we give the Lord thanks and we give him praise. Prayer of the faithful. In our prayers and petition today, let us remember those who are called to spiritual and civil leadership. We remember especially Benedict, our Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and all lay leaders, that together we might be a beacon of hope, especially for the poor, the disadvantaged, and marginalized in our world, we pray to the Lord. Today, let us call to mind and commend to our prayers Christians who undergo suffering and execution in defense of their faith, that they may experience the consolation of the gospel in the midst of their trial and tribulation, we pray to the Lord.
let us never forget to raise up in prayer the sick, the suffering, the hospitalized, the homebound, the unemployed, the terminally ill, those preparing for death, and all who have died in the friendship of the Lord. I ask your prayers especially today for the recent passing of Cardinal Aloysius Ambrosic, retired Archbishop of Toronto, who died on Friday following an extended illness. For the repose of his soul and for his family members, we pray to the Lord. In a special way, we pray for the personal intentions of our viewing audience, that their friendship with the Lord Jesus will indeed provide for them the fulfillment of their prayer intentions and their particular needs today and in the days to come, we pray to the Lord. And, and for your own personal and particular intentions, we pray. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our God, you know our hearts and you probe our thoughts. Hear and answer the prayers we present to you, those spoken aloud and those that remain in the secret of our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. We ask you to receive us the place of the sacrifice we offer you, humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. My friends, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, receive the gifts your people bring to you in honor of your saints. By the Eucharist we celebrate, may we progress toward salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we dwell always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. You renew your church in every age by raising up men and women outstanding in holiness, living witnesses of your unchanging love. They inspire us by their heroic lives and help us by their constant prayers to be the living sign of your saving power. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels and saints in their song of glory. the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. 
do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying, you destroy the death. Rising, you restore the life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so with faith and in confidence we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. And may this peace of the Lord always be with you. Let us offer now to one another a sign of peace. My friends, this is the Lamb of God. This is he who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. I'm not ready to see you, but I'm going to say the word. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for wisdom? I ask God for strength 
that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for help that I might do great things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life, and I was given life that I might enjoy all things. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we receive your gifts at this celebration in honor of St. Monica. May they free us from sin and strengthen us by your grace. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd simply like to acknowledge the fact that many know, and perhaps others should know, that Cardinal Ambrosic left deep furrows in the landscape of the Archdiocese of Toronto. And one of the legacies he has left is his undying uh, con commitment along with Bishop Sherlock on the televised mass. Indeed, if it weren't for his continuing interest and support and encouragement, many of us would be without this rich spiritual experience in our life. So now from his place in the kingdom, he certainly intercedes for all of us. So we acknowledge him and we thank him and we thank you. The Lord be with you. And may God's blessing be upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Our thanks to the Lund family, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend and we'll be looking for you all again come Monday.